Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real, and I'm joined in the studio today by my good friend and awesome realtor, Nelson Zide from EARA Key. Nelson, how you doing? Okay, Rob. How are you doing today? Very good. So, Nelson, we invited you on the show to talk a little bit about TRID, and that's the new federal disclosure rules that went yes. into effect at the beginning of the month. Lots of people are nervous about it. Yes. Nelson's here to tell us why you shouldn't be that nervous, because it's not <laughs> that big of a deal. Well, wait a minute. It is a big deal. All right, it is a big deal. All right. Deal. It is a big deal because everyone is scared to death Yes. about trade. Lawyers are scared to death. Most lenders, of course, not you, but most lenders are scared to death. Yes. And, and definitely tons of realtors, even though we've had so much education over it in the last one or two months, they're all scared to death. And unfortunately, nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. Not enough. That's they, true. They have a good idea. We'll know better probably by the sometime mid November, end of November, when we start having all our closings. Yes. You know, from the people who applied after October 3rd. This yep. is all for mortgage applications after October 3rd. Correct. So we'll know, the lenders will know, lawyers will know, realtors will know, buyers and sellers will know. We'll all know a lot better. And then coming about one or two months down the road, it'll all subside. Yes. But for now, yes. let, let's talk about for now. Yeah. I, I want to tell all of our listeners that a do not be afraid of it mm -hmm. okay there are a lot of the here's the big thing mm -hmm. there's really only two things from a buyer standpoint in a seller yep. that you have to be aware of the consumer standpoint buyer and seller financing dates and closing dates mm -hmm. now the lenders have other notification dates and they have when they have to send out notifications and there's new names for all the closing documents and the loan estimates and the um, all the other documents that we had right. before October 3rd. Yeah. And now I'm so confused, I forgot all the names. So, <laughs> all the documents. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna, it's gonna take the me HUD a while. and the till and all right. that stuff. It's yeah. going to take me a while to, get, to not use HUD anymore. It's the yes. closing statement. Yes. I think that's what it is. Closing, closing statement. Closing disclosure. Closing disclosure, the CD. So, now yes. when we talk about CDs, it's not money in a bank. Yes. It's a closing disclosure. Yes. And then there's what? A closing estimate or the loan estimate? Loan estimate. Loan estimate. The, the LE. LE. Yes. The loan estimate. So, so now everyone has to learn all new acronyms. Yes. Okay. So I'm so confused. Yeah. But what I want to let people know, and, and the realtors have to know, the buyers need to know, the sellers need to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are, that's the important things right now when you're looking to buy a house. Yes. Is the time frame that you're going to need is definitely a little bit longer yeah. than we had before October 3rd. Key component. Mm -hmm. Number one is... We use a two-contract system, and I think most of the listeners out there, their realtors in the area use a two-contract system. They use an offer to purchase, mm -hmm. which spells out the basic parameters of the sale. Right. And then they use a purchase and sales agreement, usually approximately two weeks later. Correct. So depending upon what time frames you want to use, it's the same time frames, but whether you want to use the time frame from the offer to purchase or from the purchase and sales agreement, mm -hmm. it's still going to be the same time frames, except depending upon which dates. Right. And I just had this long discussion with another lender, mm -hmm. and he was very confused mm -hmm. because he's looking at different dates and he's getting different information from different realtors, etc. Mm -hmm. So let me just go over it this way. Sure. From the day you make the offer to purchase, you should give yourself as the buyer, and the seller has to understand this too, it's 45 days from an offer acceptance, that's yes. when the seller and buyer both sign that contract, mm -hmm. the offer to purchase, that we have 45 days to get financing commitment. Yes. Okay. For, used to be we could get it in 30, not today. Correct. Okay. Maybe later, but not today. Yes. Yeah. Better okay. safe than sorry, right? right? Better Nelson? safe than sorry. So we don't need extensions. Hopefully we won't have to have extensions. Hopefully the lenders that you're using know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So we won't need extensions. So it's 45 days from offer to purchase in your closing when you buy, when the buyer actually takes ownership mm -hmm. and the seller actually gets their money and then go on to wherever they want to go to. Mm -hmm. And the more important thing is when the realtors get paid. Oh, no, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. not that important. Sorry, yeah. sorry. I forgot about that. I had to throw that one yes, in there. Yes, of course Bob. you did. It was coming if you didn't. I yeah. know. I had to throw yeah. that in there. But it's 60 days from the offer, signed offer to purchase mm -hmm. for closing. Yeah. Now, you can always do later. Yes. But to do something sooner, you most likely aren't going to hit those dates with all the new disclosures right. that the lenders need to send out to buyers right. at, in the appropriate time frames right. that they need you probably won't have enough time. Right, because a home inspection is usually done before 
the application process starts, and that That's takes correct. usually a week to a week. A week and to half. ten days, and yeah. if you're a real good home inspector, you're looking at definitely a week to ten days. If you can find someone who do it in two days, something's wrong. Yes, maybe you don't want to use that home inspector. Yeah, yeah. If they're too available, maybe pass. Oh yeah. boy, that's a real issue. That's another whole story. That's yeah. another whole show. It is okay. But what you also could do for timing, mm-hmm. if you want, you could do financing thirty days from purchase and sales agreement date. Mm-hmm. Because that's typically two weeks later Correct. after the offer to purchase. Mm-hmm. And you could do closing 45 days from purchase and sales agreement date. Right. And that's what we're doing here at Ross. Right. So you could go either way. It's that extra two weeks. Now, whether you use it from purchase and sales agreement date mm-hmm. or whether you use it from the offer to purchase date, it, it doesn't make any difference. It's either 45 days for financing and 60 days for closing from offer to purchase, mm-hmm. or 30 days for financing from purchase and sales, and 45 days for closing. Right. But either way, it puts your closing date around the same time. It, it, right. All of this is about the same time, yeah. but you don't want to mix up your dates because I've seen too many realtors even today, today, mm-hmm. I say, oh, we can get financing in 30 days from the offer. Mm. Not true. No, it's, it's not, not. going to make it. And we can close in 35, 40 days. It's not going to make it. You are going to need extension after extension, and you may put your seller in a very difficult position because if they're looking to buy something else, these back-to-back closings are going to be very difficult, at least in the next few months. After all the dust settles, Mm -hmm. it may be less difficult. But if your seller is looking to say, oh, I'm going to buy a house like a day, the same day I'm going to sell my home, and Mm. you have a very quick closing on their old home, it's probably not going to make it. No. Someone's going to be homeless. Someone's going to have furniture in storage. Someone's going to have furniture in a truck. Right. You're going to have a seller on the other end Correct. who is now going to be very upset at you. Mm-hmm. And you know who's going to get blamed? The real estate the agent real estate, and the loan officer. But the loan officer, no one knows, so therefore <laughs> they won't get blamed. Okay, no, no, no. And yes, uh, the realtor will blame the loan mm-hmm. officer, but the consumer mm-hmm. is going to blame the realtor because they are listening to the realtor for their expertise That's true. in terms of the dates and the time frames and the terms of that sale. Yes. And if the real and and all, this whole sale starts with the realtor. Mm-hmm. Now everyone says, "Well, what about the lawyers?" I'm getting to the lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> they're not they're not out of here yet. I am getting to there, but the lawyers are after the basic offer to purchase, and if they're after that, they do their purchase and sales agreement, and all the dates of the transaction all start at that offer to purchase. Mm-hmm. It just starts there. Yeah. So if you, as the realtor, on either side of the transaction, buyer or seller give the wrong dates. And I've even seen some listing agents this month who said, oh, no, we want to close in 45 days. You can't. No, it's just not going right. to happen. It's not going to happen. Cash sale, no problem. Mm-hmm. Finance sale, big problem. Right. And it also depends upon what lender you're going to go to. Mm-hmm. And I have to bring it up. If You you know, you would think mm-hmm. the major lenders, may I say some major lenders' names? No, I would not. Okay, yes. good. But we'll just say that. Right. We'll major say the lenders, big, like, the big national boys. big Large National lenders, big, yeah. large lenders. And banks, big and banks. And banks. You would think they've had almost a year to figure this out. Mm-hmm. They still don't know what they're doing. No. And if you're going to a big bank, word on the street mm-hmm. is now they're looking to say closing's 90 days. Mm-hmm. They're not telling us that, but the word on the street is. Yes. And financing is 60 days. I said, why in the world are you going to trust your life mm-hmm. as a buyer mm-hmm. to a big bank who has now figured you could do this? But they haven't quite figured it out yet. Now they will. Yeah, they will. They will. They will. So they're so big they have to err yeah. on the side of caution. And they are. Mm-hmm. And because they have so many people yes. who are involved in getting the financing commitment mm-hmm. and getting the closing documents and all the paperwork that is it's all brand new paperwork right. to make sure it's sent out in the correct time frame, to monitor the right time frames, to make sure the buyers get it in the right time frames. Etc. and so forth, mm-hmm. they still don't quite have it. We are you, your local mortgage bankers, your local, even your really good mortgage brokers, even your local banks mm-hmm. who may not be that large, who have been working on it at the same time frame, but they have less people 
that are involved in it mm-hmm. on a huge basis. Right. And even though they may be doing a lot of loans, and hopefully they are, but not quite as much as the big national ones. Right. Training a whole country's worth of people just takes longer. That's the fact of the matter. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the main thing that you really need to do as the consumer out there, don't be freaked out. Don't let your realtor freak you out. If your realtor's freaking you out, it's time to change realtors mm-hmm. because this is not that difficult to really understand. I don't, you don't need to know. Your realtor doesn't even need to know all the ins and outs of everything. Your lender does mm-hmm. because they have all these new laws that they have to adhere to. You as the realtor and your, your consumer's realtor has to know we have to have the right time frames yes. in there. And you, re- you really need to have the right documentation at the offer. And you need the right attorney. For you, Mm -hmm. because not all attorneys are up to speed on the new trade. That's true. There are a lot of attorneys who were doing real estate part time. Now, I don't mean they were part time attorney, Mm -hmm. but part of their business was real estate part time, and they did other real estate and other uh, other legal work. And some of them, it's not even part time; it's occasionally they'll do a closing, and that's that makes it really tough. It makes it very tough because they are not up to speed on the new TRID laws. And even if you go to REBA, REBA, I think, is the real estate. Um, it, it has to do with lawyers. Right. Okay, but it's, it's the association has to deal with really clo- attorneys who work in real estate mm-hmm. and closings. And even they sometimes are not quite 100% sure right now on all the right uh, wording to put in. Mm-hmm. And I know Mass Association of Realtors, their attorneys have done their work. And like it, like you can get five economists to give you five different answers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right yep. now, you get five lawyers who are going to give you five different answers. Yeah. If you're lucky, they'll only give you five different answers. Well, that's true. <laughs> if you're lucky. And what you really need to do as a buyer yeah. and in a seller, a please take the recommendation of your realtor, and hopefully they have two or three good real estate attorneys mm-hmm. who are really up on this trade. Mm-hmm. Their lawyer should have an addendum to the offer to purchase. Now, if you use, you work with my company, ERA Key Realty Services in Framingham. Yep. Okay. And most of my other offices too, we have a offer to purchase trid addendum, mm-hmm. which the buyers will sign, the sellers hopefully will sign. Hopefully the other agents know what this is. It basically just spells out there are some time frames we have to deal with. And mm-hmm. if for some reason we need extensions, then everybody knows the type of time frame we're dealing with so it'll be a smooth transition mm-hmm. from offer to purchase to purchase and sales agreement when the lawyers do put in the documentation and the wording right. about TRID, and then the buyers and sellers are going to say, I don't know what this is. Why are you telling mm-hmm. Because it's now an addendum as part of your offer to purchase. Yes. And both the Mass Association of Realtors, the Worcester Board Lawyers, the Boston Board Lawyers have all come up with their addendums mm-hmm. for their contracts for their realtors to have it. And a lot of good real estate attorneys also have their trade addendums yeah. that they want to give to their realtor friends to be able to put in their office so there's hopefully little surprises yes. down the road. Very, now, very little. And here's here's what I'm going to throw out there, Nelson. You'll probably never hear me say this again. <laughs> and I think it's an unintended consequence because it certainly wasn't what they intended when they came up with this. It's not the worst thing in the world that buyers are going to have a little more time during the process. Not Correct. the worst thing in the world because when you compress time frames, because we see it all the time, for whatever reason, when a closing needs to be rushed and you try to cut it down to three, three and a half, four weeks, it's crunch time for the buyer. I mean, people have jobs. They have stuff they need to be doing. <coughs> are you sure Excuse they me. have jobs? Most of them uh, have but jobs. We hope if they're so. getting a loan. But yeah. being a loan, they need the job. Yeah, yes. so having a couple extra weeks to get through the process is not the worst thing in the world. It takes some of the stress out of it for the buyers, for the sellers, and certainly for those of us that work in it every day. Right. And, you know, the the idea from the federal government, the concept was a great concept. Mm-hmm. To make it a little easier for the consumers to be able to shop for maybe the best loan and the mm-hmm. best lender, to make the statements and the documents easier to understand. Yes. So conceptually, it's a very good product. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, when you're doing major transitions in a major industry, yes. there's going to be some blips yes. in this. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I want to give you one more blip because this has come up. It even just came up. I did a financing class to realtors last week, and some of the realtors even brought this up then. They said, 
how are we going to get pre-approvals for our buyers? Because mm-hmm. I understand that my lenders cannot give a pre-approval unless the buyer has a piece of property. And I said, not true. Mm-hmm. I said, when it first came out like four months ago, mm-hmm. I heard a lot of lenders say that, but it is not true. The only difference is they don't give me a, pre- a pre-approval, mm-hmm. and you really want to go to your lender of choice. Mm-hmm. Can I mention my lender of choice? Sure. Okay, like Ross Mortgage Company, the <laughs> lender <laughs> yes. of choice? Yes. I just want to make yeah. sure I can mention that. You can, yeah. Okay, so you want to use them. And they can give you a, a pre-approval. Mm-hmm. They can run your credit. Well, we call it a pre-qualification. Pre-qualification. Because that's one of the things that changes to be a pre-approval. An underwriter has to physically underwrite the file. Right. Yeah. But you can. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If I came to you with my buyer today and I said, Rob, mm-hmm. can you get me a pre-qualification yes. that yeah. says you have pulled the credit, yes. you have verified income, and yes. you have verified assets, so you have all the documentation. Yes. You just haven't underwritten the room, but you have all the documentation. Yes. So I, as a realtor, feel very comfortable in showing the buyer this $400,000 home, not a problem. The only thing that changed there is we can't require the customer to provide the documents, but we can tell them that it makes it for a much stronger pre-qualification letter if it says all that stuff has been checked. Because if it says all that stuff hasn't been checked, it's not worth anything. It's not what the paper it's written on, and then the buyer is going off, who knows? Right. And the realtor is showing homes, who knows? Right. And you know what? Now let me sh- sh- just switch gears a little bit. Now I'm a listing agent. Yep. You bring me that offer to purchase. And now it has Ross Mortgage's pre-qualification on it. So therefore, I'm going to check with, with Bob Gallagher to make sure that he did all the work that he needed so the buyer is a good, strong buyer. Right. Absolutely. That's what we need to do. Absolutely. Nelson, thanks for coming in and joining us today. That's a great, some great updates on trade and why it's not that big of a deal. Some pain for the next couple of months, but it'll go away soon. Stay tuned. We've got Leaders and Legends coming up next.